Hey Royals, welcome to our team kit class for the month of November. This month I'll be showing how to make some four cards using the Sweet Little Stockings stamp set and their matching DSP and dies. Go to Whole Life Flip and we'll get started. You guys can see everything okay. We'll have it pull down just a little bit more. There we go. So fun, four cards. They're super fun and ready for Christmas. I knew as soon as I saw this stamp set and paper, I knew I had to have it because I am a pet lover. And I do have a one other card that if you're not a pet lover, you could still make something awesome with this set. Let me go ahead and show you some items we're using. So if you're stamping along with me today or watching the replay to stamp, you can know the supplies you'll need if you want to recreate these. And of course, I have a link afterwards to my blog for all the supplies I've used, measurements, and all the details you need to finish this kit. All right, so our inks for the day, I have our Cherry Cobbler and our Evening Evergreen. I am using the Sweet Little Stockings stamp set, and it is so cute. And we're just using a couple of these. I did not go crazy, because our there are 22 actual images in here. Um, I kept it pretty simple, and I re relied really heavily on the DSP. That makes for an easy kit, and is um, still shows off the cute f features of the items. So, but I use the Christmas greetings, the sending lots of love, Santa Paws is coming to town, and I think oh, and this little sprig here. It's like four stamps. You can change them up and mix them out however which way you would like. I'm also using the stocking dies, or I use the stocking dies, I should say. These are dies that coordinate and will cut out these different shapes. We'll use these ones actually fit and can cut out our DSP. So here's our stockings here. And you would just go ahead and line it up and find the size. There's three different sizes. And then you run that through your die cutting and embossing machine. Super easy and fast. And I cut this into a six by 12. So that way I can get as many as I possibly could out of this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And that it would fit in my die cutting machine. So lots of great dies here, and I used hardly any of them for this one. This one though, however, it looks like a great favorite. And they have items where you can build your own stocking. So it has like the stocking heel and the stocking top. Just really great dies. All right, so I've already mentioned a little bit about the DSP. It's called the Sweet Stockings. DSP and what I love about this I'm showing this side so you can see I love that it tells us the colors that coordinate so it makes it easy to create cards that will look great together with this paper um, this paper is amazing you get 12 sheets for 1150 and you also get it 12 different designs so there's six pieces of paper that are double sided so like this stocking one here and on the other side has these stars and then you'll have 12 sheets total. It's a great deal. I love, I love Stampin' Up's designer series paper. And this one does not fail. And I have told you this before, but I used to not ever buy current DSP because I thought it was too expensive. But if you look at your numbers and you realize it's less than a dollar a sheet for two different types on one piece of paper and it matches with everything, it is such a great deal. Such a great deal. And it goes for a long way. I always, always have leftovers even after I've made lots of cards with it. All right, uh, lastly, let me just tell you a couple other items that we're using. So for our labels today, I use the In Good Taste labels, and I've also, I'm using two embossing folders, um, the brick 3D embossing folder and the timber embossing folder. I have these brushed metallic dots that I'm using and a little bit of the holiday rhinestones there. In your kit, you will also get the um, gold trim. However, I ran out and I will use linen thread for mine. And of course, I'm using the stitch rectangles, which are currently on sale through 
uh, Thursday the 18th for 20% off. So if you don't have the stitch rectangles, you'll notice that I used them in almost every single one of these cards in our kit today. So I highly recommend you having that in your collection and there's so many different ways to use it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Enough chatting, let's get stamping. We're gonna start with a super cute one here. What I've done is I went ahead and I fussy cut this guy out, which means I use my paper snips and I just cut around the DSP. And then I have used the rectangle stitch dies to create our DSP layer here. So I cut that out once and then I cut it out this size here. Um, and then I flipped it over and I made our smaller size. So it created this cool little frame for it and I didn't have to add any extra matting here, but it totally looks like that's a mat. It's just part of the, D the um, card base. And of course we have our sending lots of love on our stitch rectangle there too. All right, let's grab the items. This one has the ever evening evergreen card base. You wanna make sure you have some basic white for the inside cause that is a dark shade. Here's our little piece to stamp on. Our little puppy dog will fussy cut out and our pieces of DSP that I have used our stitch rectangles to die cut. So here's how it looked before, like this. And I should have kept the other frame. So I went ahead and I die cut this one first and then I die cut this size here took this one and I flipped it over and die cut this size out of it. And that's how we create with this just one piece of DSP, the four different looks to it. Pretty awesome. All right, let's go ahead and do our stamping first and then we'll assemble. That's always my, my guide to you. And because this is photopolymer, I have my foam mat out handy. We're using the Evening Evergreen, which is coming quickly one of my favorite shades of green it's a great kind of I want to say a neutral color but it can be used in so many projects all right we're using the sending lots of love and you notice I usually will put this one going um, diagonal on a clear block because it fits better this way we're gonna go ahead and ink that up and we'll stamp that onto our rectangle here, st or stitch rectangle. Lined up and it looks great. All right, I'm going to put that ink away. And let's grab our cute little puppy dog. So this is what our doggy looks like all covered in his lights. And on the other side, it has like the stripey cherry cobbler look to it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paper snips and you can get as close as you want or create a little white outline around your image. Totally up to you. I like to go pretty close but give it just a little bit of outline to it. We will not need the whole string of lights here. So cut off probably just, let's see, about three or four of these. We can stop at the green and cut it up. There we go. Otherwise, it's too long and it won't fit very nicely on our card. Go around his cute little tail. And when I fussy cut, I like to hold it in this hand and rotate it with this hand as well. Um, I'm not moving my scissors as much as I'm actually moving the paper. And I use the very inner part of the scissors. I never use the tip of the scissors for when I am fussy cutting. It gives it a very smooth look that way, and it's easier to move versus me trying to cut like little snips here. It's it's harder to control the further it away is from your hand. So we're just trying to go around all these cute little light bulbs here, and around its ear. and down to his very last paw. Pretty easy. This would be something simple enough that even a young child, let's say like maybe five and older, maybe even six and older, depending on their skills with scissors, could probably do just to cut out that cute little puppy. And look how happy his face is. Oh, he's adorable. All right, let's go ahead and now assemble. We have all of our pieces. 
is grab our bone folder and we'll crease this. Super nice. I like to use liquid glue for my choice of adhesives. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and just do a little strip around the border and then one more right next to there. You wanna give yourself a little bit of squish room. So I usually give about a quarter of an inch from the actual outside lining. So that way it doesn't ooze out. If it does, you can use your um, adhesive remover. Like if you have a little square block that you can erase with, that would make it the adhesive go away. But it will leave a stickiness when you use liquid glue. So make sure you be mindful of how much you put on. Okay. This is a cute little lights one. I'm just going to put that in here and create that. Fake matting look is what it does. And then we need to add our sending lots of love with some dimensionals on the back. You want at least three because it's fairly long. Take off the backings. And we're going to put this just about, let's see. I have it going over our little DSP right there. Just a little bit. There we go. Then we need to get some dimensionals on the back of our puppy dog. It was all tangled, but yeah, it's still very happy. And sending lots of love, that could be for anything. It doesn't have this one doesn't have to be a Christmas card. Um with that type of saying. Oh my goodness, that is super cute. And let's go ahead and add our basic white, and then I'll just need to get our holiday rhinestones. And I think I left those out, so I'll need to grab, probably be helpful if I took off the lid, huh? I always like to keep the lid because I usually lose the lid, but it keeps this clean. And so I've been doing really good and trying really hard not to use lose that clear lid because, let's face it, it's little, it's clear, it's going to get lost. So make sure you make a mental effort not to lose the clear lid on your seal or your seal plus. You could stamp something in here as well. I'm going to leave mine blank for today and let me grab those rhinestones. So we're going to be using the holiday rhinestones in your kit. You have just a couple of them. And let's see if I can find them. Here we go. Holiday rhinestones, my favorite. I think I've used these for two of my stamp camps already. But look, they have so many different colors and they carried over. So I love, love it. We're going to use kind of like this lighter pool party look. And we're going to just put it right there. I like these rhinestones because they kind of, they really match the light bulbs here. And they kind of look like a light bulb as well. We'll do one of the, the cherry cobbler ones and we'll stick on one of our little yellow ones there too. You want to use at least three make it look nice and there we go we have our two cute sending lots of love puppy dog card that can be used for Christmas or anything you want to send love for okay let's go ahead and go on to our next one let's do this one here this one's super cute and fairly easy I've died cut out two of our rectangles here. I have that our label, and I've had just a little bit of the evening evergreen woven woven, I think it's how you say it, uh, ribbon there, and embellished with just one single of those metallic dots. All right, let me grab these pieces. It's a cherry cobbler card base, but a little different on the size. So I have it going the four and a quarter by eleven, scored at the five and a half. I usually don't make cards that direction. Um, I'm usually more of like the open book kind, but I like the way this looks when it stands. It stands up really nicely, kind of like a teepee, a teepee look for that one. So we made sure to make this one easily standable. So I have these two pieces of ribbon, so that's about four inches each, and then I have two of these pieces of our DSP. And I have a different background for that one. And so I'm going to show you, you can kind of mix it up however you want. Um, if you think this looks too busy, you can try a different one. 
Um, but I like it and it's the same one as this guy, just on the other side. So when I die cut it, I'm just mindful to make sure I have it facing up for the side that I want to have the stitch end on it. You see there, the two, double stitching, stitching and stitching there. And this DSP is so cute. I, this, this cat, I, he looks like the cat that like just got out of the water. There's a cute little corgi, this little black and white guy. I think that's a gerbil or a hamster. And of course our cute little lab there again too. Love, love this paper. Okay, let's do our stamping again first. We'll grab our foam mat, our label that's in the old olive, and we're going to use our evening evergreen again. This time we're doing our Santa Paws is coming to town. And I just realized something I forgot. We'll see if I can grab something else or make it work. Not for this card, but for another card. I usually have my reusable wipes ready and I didn't get any of them ready yet, so we'll see. All right, Santa Paws is coming to town. Push that down and release. Awesome. Cute, cute saying. Let's remove that. Let's get rid of our ink so we don't make bad choices with that. Um, if you know me, it gets messy in here, so you know that it's not gonna be good if I accidentally put something in there. Paper, my finger. All right, we're gonna take this piece first and put a little bit of liquid glue on it, and we're gonna attach it with to a slant. And you can play with these before you actually glue on to kind of get a feel of where you wanna place it. I've gotten pretty good about knowing where I like things to go, and then if I wanted to play with this one now, I can kind of see. I wanna make sure I have some of it showing out. If you want this to go a little higher or a little bit lower, if you want this corner to show, totally up to you. You can also change this up a little bit and add dimensionals to this piece instead and have that popping up. Your choice. There we go. I'm gonna have mine showing just like that. Okay, for our Santa Paws, what we need to do is add some dimensionals, but we're gonna attach this to it as well. So we have this ribbon here, and you could do this a couple of ways. You could put a little bit of the seal on here to help you attach it, or you could just use your dimensionals, and that will make it stay in place too. So just like that, we'll grab our dimensionals, help to secure it, and also to make them pop up. So I love ribbon, but sometimes ribbon and tying bows is time consuming. And so you, if you want the ribbon, but you don't want the bow, this quick little layer makes a great, a great alternative. All right, we're just gonna place that on here and then we're gonna do some trimming. So we're gonna take our paper snips and just go at an angle. So then cut both at the same time. Go this direction. There we go. Cute. Some people like their ends to fray, some don't. So it just depends on how you like it. Um, if you don't want them to fray, just make sure your scissors are really sharp. And you can always add some um, clear nail polish on the ends of your ribbon, and that will make them not fray. For me, it's just one extra strap, so I'm not too worried about my fraying ends. I think it gives it kind of character. Okay, something like that. Next, we're just going to add the basic white for the inside. And I like to use my seal. This is my seal plus, but either one would work. Flip it over and put it in. You could stamp this before attaching it. Some other cute item. I know they had this Candy cane would be cute in here. Maybe even the little hat, the little presents could be really cute in there. You can make it more festive, however you like. All right, and then we just need our fun little gem there. Let me grab that from this one. So these, the metallic, the brushed metallic dots come with three different styles of the metallic look. More of like a gold, copper, and brass. And you can pick whichever color I think gold's fairly popular right now with Christmas. So we'll just put that cute little gold one right there. All right, there you have it. 
really easy. We die cut that DSP and just create our fun background and that's our main focus point. And then we've only had to stamp one image, a great card to mass produce. All right, let's go on to our next one, which is the stockings. Let's grab our pieces for this one. This is the non, um, oh no. I've lost the top of this guy here. I don't know if he flipped over. I think he did. We'll fix him. There we go. <laughs> the little dot there. This is our non-pet friendly <laughs> Christmas card using this set. So like I said, if you're not a, a pet lover or an animal lover, then you could still make cute little stocking cards with this one. And this one gives a fun look of a, almost like a fireplace or at least a shelf right here. And then this fun brick wall and our gr greeting right there in the bottom. Let's go ahead and grab our pieces, which is the old olive card base. I've embossed the brick for our basic white. I have the timber right here and our three stockings, which you'll see on the back side again, are those stars for the double-sided DSP. And I have our label here. So let's go ahead and grab our foam mat and we can stamp on there our Christmas greetings using our evening evergreen and our Christmas greetings. Again, I have this one going from corner to corner diagonally to help make it fit. Let's get that inked up really nice. I will usually do a practice stamping before Especially if I haven't stamped with this one for a while, which I haven't. And so we are taking a risk. And I did not do any practicing before this video. So we'll press down nice and firm and lift straight up. Oh, that turned out great. All right, let's set that aside again. And let's assemble. So I'm going to use my liquid glue. And we're going to put it on the back of our brick and attach it to our card. I like the liquid glue for embossed pieces because sometimes it will catch and snag and make it really, and can rip your paper if you use like a double-sided adhesive. So liquid glue is my go-to for anything that I emboss. So we have that one. And I've used the Early Espresso and I just have this going a little bit over our basic white. So it's like five and five eighths, I wanna say. We're going to put dimensionals on the back of this one because we want this one to pop up just a little. I was so happy to see that this item is going to be carrying over. So it's in our holiday catalog, but it will be in our upcoming annual one. So they are carrying this one over, which I love because it's that great wood grain look there. All right, next you need to make sure you attach your label because we don't want to have our stockings behind it. We want them to be in front. Grab some liquid glue. Or you could pop that one up. I think it's better when it's flat on the wall though. And just get it about centered so you have sides on both of you. And now we can attach our stockings. Go ahead and grab your dimensionals and put one on, on the back of each one. If it's the bigger one, you could probably put two if you wanted. I'm gonna put them mostly close to the, to the top. And you wanna start with your center stocking. So take off that backing, put them right about there. You don't wanna cover your words, so just be mindful of your placement. And then we're gonna add this cute one here. And our last one, just a little, little yellow one. All right, now we'll grab those brushed metallic dots right here that have the adhesive on the back and we'll just make kind of like a fake looking nail or a way to hold it. And I like to do one of each color, but it's up to you how you want to do yours. Sometimes, you see this one just came separated from that adhesive like a glue dot. If that happens, you just put it back on there, hold it between your fingers, and I'll make it heat it up a little bit and it should be able to slide off better this time. If not, then I can always use a glue dot as well. Okay, there we go. And we'll throw this guy right here. Okay, 
There we go. So, oh, I forgot. Let me put our basic white on the inside. Stamp this first if you want to add anything else to the inside of your card. I'm going to keep mine blank. And there we go. Now we have two of our finished Christmas greetings stockings cards that I just love using that DSP to create our stockings. If you didn't have this DSP, you could use the stamp set because it has those stockings in these sizes and then either stamp them on colored cardstock or stamp them on basic white and then color them in with your stamping blends. Okay, our last card is our fun fold card. I always try to do at least one for our kit classes for our team. And this one is so cute with this little grumpy kitty cat. Um, and it opens up like this. And then has like a kind of little um, valley right there. Cover that up. Santa Paws is coming to town. So, so cute. All right. Let's go ahead and set him there. And there's no stamping on the front of this card. This one is all just for the inside. And there's lots of pieces and lots of different types of DSP for this one. Which is one of the things I love. This card really shows off, I think, four different of our DSP designs. Four of the six, which is awesome. Okay, so let me grab all of our pieces. I went ahead and I've die cut this guy out with the stitch rectangles. And then I have a mat for him that we'll place on him. This is for the top of our little, I want to call this usually like our mini base or our second base. Because... This card feels like it has two ways to open it. That's for the front there. This is for the inside. It will stamp on this part. This is for the front here. And of course, this piece is our big DSP there. So mostly you just have a lot of gluing to do and a little bit of stamping for this one. Let's go ahead and stamp on our basic white. I'm grabbing my foam mat in again. And because I didn't grab something to clean off my... Um, stamp. I won't get to use our in our cherry cobbler. We'll just keep it like in the evening evergreen. So if you have cherry cobbler, please use that one. Otherwise, I'm going to just use the evening evergreen. Okay, Santa Paws is coming to town. And we're going to stamp that a little bit lower because we're going to put some DSP on the top here. There we go. And if I mess up, I can always flip it over. Oh, that looks great. I also have this cute little like um, branch or sprig. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up in our evening evergreen and just put it in the corner here. Cute. This adds just a little extra touch. Okay, let's close up this color and we can start assembling. Let's go ahead and grab our little piece of DSP. We're gonna put on the top here to add that extra decorative look. You can have it in either way. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the lights for this one. For this one, I had that little cute swirly look for that one. Totally up to you. Just a little bit of glue. And attach it to the top there. Flip it over, add our seal, our seal plus to the back. And I like to do just corners and sometimes center. We don't need a whole lot of that adhesive because it is so strong, which is nice because it makes it go a lot further and saves you money, which I'm all about. Okay, we're putting this in the inside of our little mini base. This is the Mossy Meadow is the color of this one. Let's go ahead and glue on our lights to the front of this one. The great thing about this DSP here is that there's no like upside down, right side up because it's all just kind of a crazy design of those lights swirling around. And there we go. I was going to add this to our mat there and then we will have dimensionals on the back of the mat. Let's shimmy him over. That's another good reason why we use liquid glue so we can move it if we weren't perfect the first time which in many cases I am not. Okay, get these dimensionals ready. Oh, I put that one right there, that's okay. 
He's gonna have some extra dimensionals. I probably would have put only five, but if you wanna go be extra like me, you can put a, another one right there. Okay. Flip this over, put it on the front of our mini card here and try to get it centered. It looks great. Okay, next we just need to add our DSP to this guy and then attach that one. Again, this one has no upside down, right side up. It goes on the bottom of this card base. And then we'll attach this one. And this one has a cute little corgis on the other side. You see that one? I was almost sad to use it because he is so cute. And our little cat's playing with the ball. And again, you can forget the goldfish with his little Christmas tree in there. The cutest paper ever. Right? Right. All right. Put our DSP. Have it so we have borders on all sides. Just shift it a little bit. All right. Then we'll go ahead and add DS or DSP. We'll add liquid glue, the multi-purpose liquid glue, with the green lid. A lot of times that's what people refer to that kind. And we're going to attach it to the center of our DSP here. This will, you will need to allow to dry before we play with this super crazy like and open and close it. And so if you wanted to use the Sil Plus for that step, you totally could. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add our cool messy twine there. So this one has the trim. And let me show you how to do that one, even though uh, I think it might, I don't want to try ripping them off probably, huh? So all I do is you have the trim in your kit. I'm just using linen thread here, which totally works. You can wrap your fingers around if you want like that and make kind of like a nest and cut that and put it behind it. Or for this one, what I did was I had dimensionals and I looped it, put a dimensional down here, made a little loop, and then I came across again, put another dimensional down, made another loop, put another dimensional down, and then cut the end off. And that created this kind of cool bow look to the back of this one here. Because cats love string, right? That's that's whole play on there. All right, let me show you this one. It should be ready to open and close. Super cute. Santa Paws coming to town either in that evening evergreen or in the cherry cobbler with the trim. All right, let's get all the cards back in view that we made today. We have our cute grumpy kitty, our shelf and stockings, of course our cute little Santa paws with all the different creatures in this one, and then our sending lots of love with our fussy cut cute little guy there. All right, ladies, I hope you've had a great time learning how to make these cards. I can't wait to see the ones you create with the kits that I sent to you, and I hope you guys have a great, great November. Happy stamping, everyone. Goodbye.